Hey guys, so today we're just going to go over some, let's see, 3D milling, just kind of procedures and operations. And instead of clicking through it and me doing it step by step, I'm just going to show you kind of some of the projects that I've done in the past. Um, right here in front or on your screen right now, you can see this little nozzle type thing that I made for Brother Kinghorn. And you can see in here, actually, let me just do this. Okay. So you see, this is kind of a conical little hole comes down to this flat surface with a chamfer on the inside of here. And in order for me to machine this out, I actually ended up using all five of these procedures over here. First, did a ramp to kind of take away the inside. Then it went again, but just made it a little bit wider. Then went again and made it a little bit wider. And then you can see that on this one, it wasn't quite reaching that bottom. So because my tool could handle it, I actually went in and used an end mill to do the drilling. You can see right here. And all that was doing was just taking off that last little bit of material. That and this last ramping. Yeah, these ramping operations weren't grabbing. See that every single one is just a little bit short a little shy. So I came in there, grabbed that. And then lastly came in with the ball end mill. And ball end mills are typically used just for finishing your products and your projects. And you can see that my step down was super low for this. That's just because I want a really, really nice finish. And this actually ended up giving me really close to mirror finish. It looked amazing. Um, and we can actually just go ahead and open that up. So you can see where now on these, if you're doing multiple op operations like I did, you don't want to go in, go ahead and actually leave your stock to leave. And every time you're on a new operation, you want there to be material for it to cut away. So the first one, you're going to leave quite a bit of stock in this area and then the next one a little less and a little less and then you can see right here in my step downs on this ramp I had this five thou so every circle that it made going around the part it only went down five thou as you can see um so now when I took CNC class I tried to get this approved to be my own personal project ended up not getting approved by a mostly made it. I haven't still quite finished it. But I did machine five of the six sides and this worked. So I want to make a ball inside of a cube just because I thought that'd be pretty fun. But so I drew this up in SolidWorks. Well the problem was I wasn't actually able to machine any of this or set up in HSMworks. I was just having a really hard time struggling trying to get it to machine only within this cavity. So the way that I chose to do it was I actually ended up going and drawing it exactly how I wanted it to be machined. So you can see, I actually just went ahead and defeatured everything else. I went and put in all of these fillets around and these fillets are the exact same size of the tool that I was using. So instead of trying to take my finished model part, I actually ended up modeling a new one that had just the finished look that I wanted. So I was gonna go and machine each side individually. Um, so you can see before this, I went in and I actually used an eighth inch flat end mill at first, and then came back in later with this ball end mill. And once again, you can see with that ball end mill, I want a really nice finish. So I put them really close together. And that job that I used was up here in 3D milling, just this parallel. And there we go. And in order to get to do everything, I had to go around and 
click a lot or select a lot more stuff, but I'll leave it. Anyways, so just you're gonna have to go in and adjust your stepovers and take them really small and select OK. But yeah, and then come over here. This is another project that I did for my 380 group in a class. So what we had to do is we're putting O-rings, that'll work, down inside of a hole like this. So for this one, I actually had to go in and like customize the tool, specify all the dimensions on it, and then use that to do what I wanted. And so I will show you what I ended up choosing to do. So initially came in, and this is just with the center drill, came in, tapped it, and then told it to drill a hole. And I went and bored out that hole. And then using the tool, I, let's see, defined in here, just came down. I ended up using this tracing feature. But I can go ahead and I can show you this tool. So I end up defining this shape as a half inch cutter with, let's see, this guy was an eighth inch thick and this shaft was only a quarter inch. And one of the real problems I had with this is that when it kept leaving, it would go into the part just fine, like to machine it, but then it'd go around, trace it, and it'd pull straight up out. And it wasn't clearing this wall when it was pulling out. So something I did fix that was my lead in and lead outs. So right here with this lead in, lead out, I had to go and play with that until it ended up giving me what I wanted. And so just for fun, I'm go through and just watch what I did here. I'm not be too fast. And then something you probably already discovered is it's rarely just going to leave that solid gray or whatever. You're almost always going to see that color from the individual tools left behind. Okay. And then I'm not going to go through it, but real quick. So let's say you wanted to machine this out. And so there are a couple, I mean, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. It's up to you. But like if I were to machine this, I'd go in and I'd try to machine out the majority of this first with a bigger end mill and then go in with the smaller one touched up and then go in with a parallel or with a ball end mill and go in and give it a nice finish. I'm just going to go into this job one right now. You can see I've already kind of set it up for that. Is right here, I have a half inch end mill going, and then we have a quarter inch end mill. And like I said before, you want to leave a little bit of stock for each piece to grab. So right here, you can see that stock to leave. I am going to increase the depth on it. So that, and call it good. And this guy, go ahead and change it as well. No, and this one, because it's the last one before the ball and mill, ball and mill isn't going to be able to grab 
in this corner right here. So I'm not stuck to leave. On ledges, I'm just going to go zero. And then underneath. Five. My five thou. Now, oh, if I want to add in that running, let's see a ball on mill around the inside curve just to give it a nice finish, I go and select any of these. Let's grab that. Let's switch our tool out. See right here, we can specify like how far we want to drop on each one. And if you want a really nice finish, you just want to make that super small. It takes a really long time, but that's kind of the trade-off. You can get a rougher finish or a faster operation or a really slow operation, get a really nice finish. And then let's make sure we have, we're not leaving any stock, looks good. I was just going to come in and try and finish that off. You can see it's like kind of doing these little annoying things right here over the holes. I don't know. I mean, you can play with it, or you can actually go into the code itself and get rid of that by just deleting them if you want, or you can just leave it, which is usually what I've opted to do because it's the easier thing. Anyways, so you can see that those first operations went and they hogged out the majority of the material and just coming at that ball and mill to take to get it that really nice smooth finish at the end. And then usually when I'm doing complex geometry and trying to machine it, as I've explained in previous videos, I always try to draw the part as it's going to be finished or as it's going to be machined. You saw that with the ball inside of a cube is, um, I actually had to go and make it so it wasn't a ball inside that cube. I mean, it was just the one side that I wanted to machine and that was it. Um, you can see here, even that really small step over, I'm still gonna get the perfect finish I wanted, but it's close. Anyways, so when you wanna do stuff, just play around with it. Keep selecting new options. Anyhow, those are some of the projects I've done and how I've used 3D milling to do them. Thanks.